With other schools, you could either get grades from 100 to zero, ranging from anywhere in that range. And really, you wouldn't be able to take a chance to learn from that in a row. They just give you that assignment and they'd give you a grade. There was no really, it was just a question and an answer. But with standard-based grading, you could take each individual standard. Say if you were good at fractions, but not good at decimals and standards, you could maybe stop maybe learning at one standard, which would be fractions, and learn more about the decimal standard. And you can review them with your teacher and go over tutoring and anything about that. Um, it just seems that this school at me um, wants to prepare you for the future, not just for you to get a grade and move on. Where in a traditional system, a, a student may have a, you know, a bad reporting period or a reporting period that really isn't representative of of what they know um, and it has an impact throughout the year. They sort of carry that with them throughout the year. We set on uh, a journey to recreate a grading system or, or redesign the traditional grading system so that we could tease out what a student knows from what they've submitted and not. Um, one of the main things that we do with this neat way is we break down um, three different sets of values that we want students to have. We break them down into skill sets, tool sets, and mindsets. So our skill sets measure a student's demonstration of learning related to academic standards. So how are they able to apply the academic standards and how have they demonstrated um, their ability to do just that? But we also assess students on tool sets and mindsets. So we will grade students using standards-based grading on their tool sets. How was their time management? How was their group work? Um, and we also assess them on their mindsets. Did they have a growth mindset through this process? Were they inclusive? Were they resilient? Carroll Magnet Middle School is a different school for me in a lot of different ways and for a lot of people at our school because um, in our school, we do a lot of grading differently rather than just giving you a standard grade and not really giving you the tools or information you need to proceed forward and be able to get a better grade or work harder. They give you extra tools needed to be able to reach your goals and actually work towards them and be able to understand it and apply it. So Carol is very different. Most of the differences are just around innovation. Grading being um, one of those innovative practices that we have kind of adopted at Carol. So we do competency-based grading rather than the traditional grading system, which sort of is the basis of everything else that we do here. Um, we also use a lot of creative scheduling and every year is a little bit different because we're always trying to kind of stay on the cusp of what's new and what we can do to serve our very unique population of students and how we can continually improve our process every year. So no two years look the same. The Competency-Based Education Mastery Framework or the CBE Mastery Framework outlines the important structural elements found in a CBE environment, including the support systems and policies that enable and sustain CBE. The CBE Mastery Framework was developed through the work of the Regional Education Laboratory, Southeast's North Carolina CBE Research Alliance. According to Ed Elements, educators implementing CBE must rethink fundamental structures in school districts. So providing professional development specific to CBE strategies is one of the most critical elements to start with under the structure dimension of the CBE Mastery Framework. Professional learning is so critical, especially in the beginning, and ensuring that teachers have adequate preparation. And there's always a learning curve when implementing anything new um, for educators, but everybody needs to have a common language and really define what competency-based uh, education looks like in their school or district. So we spend a lot of time with professional development uh, and professional learning uh, with our teachers and they need to be in include opportunities for teachers to collaborate with each other and have deep conversations about how to approach teaching and learning. At Shreveford, um, we allowed our teachers to visit other schools which helped them to see it in action. And this was an element of um, professional learning that was so valuable to our teachers in the beginning. I will also say that we spent a lot of time with, when it came down to instruction, really understanding what we uh, needed to teach. And we used several protocols and collaborated and looking at how do we break down our standards into small units and then creating a learning progression so that teachers were very clear about what they were teaching, but that they were designing their assessments based on those learning targets. And as they 
were assessing students for mastery that those the the learning targets was their guide in using um uh, and using that and using standard-based grading one thing that we found imperative in, in this model was to have truly strong uh, PLCs in place. So being able to have teams of educators, both horizontally and vertically, that are looking at the alignment of activities to standard or to competence, competency. Professional development around CBE is related to the next set of structural elements, which are often addressed together and include having clearly defined standards and competencies, creating authentic assessment systems, awarding course and grade credits based on mastery of competencies, and using a learning management system that enables CBE assessment and grading. So when we first started this process, we found it to be very helpful for everybody to go through their individual standards with a fine tooth comb and really lay out the standards that we were covering in each class and each course across grade levels, look at vertical alignment um, and really dig into the standards. And while teachers typically know their standards pretty well, we went even further and sort of, you know, what do these standards mean? How can we create competencies that align with these standards? And we tied in, you know, speaking and listening and literacy skills with every subject area. And then we built rubrics based on all of that information and PLTs work together to build rubrics for every single standard, and every single competency and laid out the framework for what does it look like if a student doesn't quite get it? What does it look like when a student is on grade level and has achieved mastery? And what does it look like when they've already achieved and are above and beyond mastery? And so those rubrics really help us with our assessments um, and any assignments that we give. So what we do here at Shuford is we unpack all of our standards. So we, as a grade level, will sit and we'll get together and we'll unpack standards and we'll create learning targets for those standards. So we create a learning progression. So after we have created that learning progression, then we will create our assessments based on the learning progression. We um, create those assessments and we use them as a pre-assessment and a post-assessment. So that way, when we give our pre-assessment, we know exactly what pieces of that standard or in that learning target our students do not know. So that way we're able to target that piece specifically and meet that child's needs. Other important structural elements in a CBE environment include creating flexible scheduling and altering a school's physical infrastructure to be more conducive to CBE. We also don't kind of live by the confines of quarters or semesters. We have quarters and semesters and we have progress reports that go out at the end of those, but we don't consider that to be a cutoff as a traditional school might. Um, you don't get an A for first quarter. You just get a report that says where you are on the continual improvement of your standards that have been assessed in that first quarter. And so that kind of drives the differences in our assessments. They're ongoing and they don't just say, well, you know, you got you got to be in this and now we're going to move on. If they get um, a two on their rubric out of four, they know that they need to go back and do revisions or they need to go back and, and learn it in some different way and show their understanding differently so that they can achieve that grade level mastery. They also had um, choice in where they would sit and different type of work environments where they could move around the room if they aren't, you know, I'm not a sit in a chair all day at a desk type of teacher. So I know it's hard for students too. They could sit on a bouncy ball or at a stool or, you know, up on a stage, wherever they feel most comfortable, because obviously being comfortable in your setting is going to also promote success. Making these structural changes in a school or district does not happen overnight and requires careful consideration and commitment by educators, school leaders, and the community. I think it's also really, really important to plan. So we used last summer to plan our standards-based grading initiative. So we took the summer to break down our standards. We took the summer to create rubrics. We took the summer to get educated so we could be fully prepared for this year. 
And I think it's also important to know that you're not gonna, you might not get it right the first time, or at least you might not implement it 100% of the way. Um, it's important to keep um, growing and to build these small steps to build a foundation so that you can get to that 100% implementation. For more information about CBE, including additional videos related to the CBE Mastery Framework, visit the REL Southeast website.